move your nonprofit forward? You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Nonprofit Architect, where we are giving you the actionable steps you need to launch and grow your nonprofit organization. Now, here's your host, Travis Johnson. Hey, welcome. I'm here today with Chris Sahanik. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good, Travis. Thanks for having me. Hey, I enjoy having you here on the show. I know you've got a busy week coming up. You've got uh, an event here just in a few days, and I definitely appreciate your time. But you're running Project Boone and Firm Media and five or six other things, if I remember right. Why don't you tell everyone what it is you're involved with? My wife and I own some for-profit businesses. We own uh, a restaurant in Southern California called the Hitch Burger Grill. We just got an email yesterday uh, approving, well, mostly approving our letter of intent to open a second location. Um, we had opened, had multiple locations in the past, but rebranded, came up with some new menu ideas and really started refocusing on doing something with sort of this idea of going from good to great. And uh, we're in the process of opening a second location there. And uh, have, for 14 years now, I've owned a digital marketing agency that focuses on doing web design, search engine optimization, video photography, stuff like that for uh, mostly plastic surgeons across the country. Um, it's a boutique agency that offers sort of market exclusivity. So uh, one major plastic surgeon in each market. Um which, which keeps us pretty busy. And then uh, I think about 10 years ago, actually nine years ago, uh, we felt grateful for, you know, if you count back the years, we started the, the businesses, the restaurant and the um, marketing agency in June of 2008. Uh, in June of 2008, obviously the market crashed in October. Um, and we had to s- scratch and claw to make those businesses work. And the marketing firm grew 64% year over year. The first three years we were open in spite of the the sluggish economy. It took probably seven, eight years to get out of that mess. And we felt, we just felt grateful. So we wanted to kind of give back a little bit. And uh, so we started Project Boone, which is a 501c3 nonprofit, um, which I'm sure we're going to talk a lot about here in, in the United States, doing events, holiday based events here in the United States. And then, uh, my wife is from a small village in, in Guadalajara, just outside of Guadalajara, Mexico, uh, where we started doing events down there each year, too. So that's been about nine years that we've been doing about 12 to 14 holiday-based events a year in two countries. That's really cool. I know we, we talked earlier this weekend. Uh, I really love what you were doing for your events. It With, with Project Boone, you know, you're, you're feeding people for Thanksgiving, and you were talking about you being in the music industry and you put together your first event for Project Boone, and how many people showed up? Two two thousand five hundred people showed up to eat Thanksgiving, uh, a Thanksgiving meal. But you were so used to having thirty thousand people at a concert, you're like, oh, twenty five hundred people. That's you know, that's, a, that's I guess that's okay. And you know, from most of the people in the nonprofit world, the nonprofit side, you hear twenty five hundred at an event, and that is a world class event. But you were like, eh, I guess I can do better next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I mean, I, I didn't do uh, stadium sh- events and things like that, but I did do very large festivals and stuff where it wasn't uncommon to see five, six, seven thousand people at the event. Uh, a lot of times, I was working with a lot of the talent that was there, um, and also involved in like you know everything from merchandising all the way over to catering. Right? You know, there's just a lot of moving parts, right? Um, and then it's the music business. Not everybody's sober. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 the, the, the variables are completely different. So you show up and do a nonprofit event and 2,500 people show up and most of them are grateful. And sober? Uh, most of them. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> um, but, uh, but the reality is it's just, it's not the same animal. So a lot of times it goes, for me, it goes smoother. I guess it is technically hectic if you haven't done it before. But, but I do remember, I remember standing in the park the first, the very first Thanksgiving event we did it's a long series of stories about how we got to the point where we were, where I was the guy producing a holiday-based event in the in the middle of a park in uh, Southern California, and I was standing in the park on the stage where we had just done the opening ceremonies, and was looking around at all the people in the park, and, and over on this end you have probably thirty or forty tables of people sitting around eating. With um, uh, on this end of the park you had 
uh, vendors and people getting flu shots and haircuts and eye exams. Um, and then over on in the middle area in front of the stage, you had kids getting face painting and all kinds of stuff like that going on. And I looked around and it was just a sea of people in this park. And I thought to myself, this, this started in my head as an idea. That, that blew my mind. It was probably the most rewarding moment I've ever had in uh, giving back since, since I've been doing it. Where I just thought, wow, like ideals are so powerful. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's the idea that, that, that sparks this, this burning desire within us. But then you actually you know, take this next step and you lay out this plan and what your vision might look like. And then you start taking steps towards that. And then when it you know, manifests and comes into creation in front of you as you, you know, envisioned it or, or hopefully you know, near to what you've envisioned it, you're like, man, we put something really special together here. And I mean, you opened up talking about you know, doing holiday meals, but it's really more than a meal with what you guys put together. So, so for me, I, I personally, and this is kind of, this may or may not be, um, this is, this is just is what it is, right? Like I, I was in the music business and as a kid, when I grew up, I think I talked about this before, right? Like my friends, you know, they're all their heroes were like, um, Steve Garvey or, or whatever, you know, baseball players or, or Joe Montana or, you know, they're all got subscriptions to like uh, sports Ill- illustrated magazine. And then as I got a little older, it was, uh, certain bands or whatever. Right. And for me, I mean, as a little kid, I remember being fascinated with like Martin Luther King or Muhammad Ali, right? Like a sports figure, but like I was more like inspired by what he was doing outside the ring. If when I got older and I got into music, right? Like arts and entertainment, um, I was more inspired by the bands that were uh, found themselves testifying in front of Congress for one reason or another. And um, then I was about the ones that were on the cover of a magazine. Um, and so I just, I, I just kind of always intuitively knew there was the part of me that felt the same way. Like if I was given some leverage in my life at some point, and I, I tell people this all the time, when I was younger, I didn't have any real leverage in the world. So I had kind of like a spoon to move dirt, you know, like that was my thing. And then I got a little older and I had some more leverage and then it was like a shovel. Right. And today I feel like I have maybe, you know, a, a couple dump trucks and a, and a backhoe, right? Like, I could use a fleet of trucks and a fleet of backhoes, but right now I got like a backhoe and a truck. So I'm able to just, I have more leverage. I can move more dirt. Um, and I, and, and I just feel like, um, you know, one of, one of my, uh, like, I don't know who said it, but it's a quote that I really like. Like the, the more your business grows, the more, so the more your business grows, so does your responsibility to others. And that might, could be your employee, could be your, um, could be your employees, could be the community that supports you, could be the people that buy the products that you put out, um, whatever that is. And that's something that I've always tried to keep my, my, just stay open to, you know? Oh, yeah. It's not so much that, you know, this football team is the champions, but you're the champions of the football league. And what else are you doing for the greater good is what you brought up to me in our pre-interview. You know, you're the champs, but you're the champs in what? Do you just good at boxing or are you good at something else? Yes, right. Like, you know, uh, I, I don't know. This is a debate that could go on forever. But like, when they talk about the greatest of all time, Floyd May- Floyd Mayweather gets compared to Muhammad Ali, and I'm like, what? You know, like, I made him a lot of money. Doesn't doesn't uh, usually stack up for me in my mind. With uh, I took a lot of risks, or I did a lot of things for the greater good. Um, yeah, so. absolutely. It's, it's it's one thing to say that you're good at a sport. Or it's another thing to say that you're good in business or, you know, just general beauty. It's, another, it's one thing to say you're pretty, but you're pretty. Well, what else do you have to offer? Yeah, you're good at sports, but you're a complete jerk in the street. Like, why is that thing? Or, you know, you're in Southern California. You got congrats on being in a blockbuster movie, but you just treated that waiter that's trying to make it, you know, put his life together. You just treat them like garbage. Like, congrats on being rich, famous, pretty, whatever the thing is. But, but what else do you have to offer? What else? What else are you doing behind the scenes? You know, we lost Kobe Bryant earlier this year. And, uh, you know, I wasn't exactly a huge basketball fan. I knew who he was and I knew a few things. And and someone was like, well, I'm kind of sad, you know, Kobe's gone. And, you know, my initial reaction, I was like, like, really? I mean, like, you know, a basketball star 
yeah, whatever. Uh, family men, that hurts, you know, with young kids, absolutely. And I did a little bit more digging and saw all the things that he was doing off the court. And I was like, man, that is a huge hit to the community. As someone that you know, used the attention that they had and the money that they made to really make an impact for other people. And that's, you know, one of the reasons where we really enjoy the nonprofit world, I think, you and I, is because you're, you're doing more than just taking care of yourself. You're doing more outside of your own being, outside of your own scope. And you're, you know, you're really starting to make an impact on the world around you uh, for good. And that's, that's fantastic. But you, when you bring your people together and you do, you know, holiday meals, you're not just feeding them. You're bringing in other partners. You're bringing in uh, dental care, medical care. And like, how did you come up with adding all those other little things to your food service? So I guess that's what I was starting to say a little bit ago. I think I got sidetracked, but I, the, the, the point I was making is that like, I, I you know, in, in, in I, I'm from Los Angeles. Uh, I worked in Hollywood until I was 33 years old. I worked in an industry where it was just customary to wake up in the morning and start talking about yourself all day. Um, na- you're either talking about yourself or name dropping all day. And it's a it's a very uh, self absorbed reality. I, I grew up in a you know I was young, right? So I was living in a pretty self absorbed reality. And I gotta say that when I came out of the music business at 33 years old, I was a little uh, I refer to it as a little soul sick, right? Just you know, just uh, some things were missing. I had taken way more than I had given. And I think in in growing up in in Los Angeles and working in Hollywood, it's it's not uncommon to like to sort of give and do it for PR or, um, you know, I, I like, I, I refer to them as like the selfie volunteers, right? Like we're going to have 700 people volunteer at our event, but like 30 of them are going to come just for their selfies. And they're not really going to want to work. They're not really going to want to, you know, <laughs> and they're there to look good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I know that there has to be more to just get to, to helping someone than just giving them something. Mm-hmm. And so in an effort to, to create, to do our events and meet a need for me where I really just wanted to give back. I wanted to give to the greater good. I wanted to, you know, I, I think I've told you this before, Project Boon, the word boon, it, it's a Thai word that means the merit that you get for doing a good deed. There's lots of, it's, there's a version of the word boon in English and in, in Chinese, I think. Um, but the where I got it from was uh, from a Buddhist monk, actually. And he had said uh, the word boon and you know, talking about it. So it's the, the merit that you get for doing a good deed. And so what I thought was, well, years and years ago, I, got, I went on Twitter and I signed up with the name Project Boon, not knowing that years later it would be the name of the nonprofit that, that we ended up uh, starting. But the idea was that like I don't think we're going to ever be able to eradicate uh, homelessness or struggle or any of those things from people. But I do think that we could possibly create communities, more communities of people that were giving back and rally people together so we could sort of lessen the intensity or the impact of that struggle in people's lives. So it's funny, and this is a little strange, but we do these events for people, right? And as we're doing the events for the people, most people think the event is for the 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 under serve families that are coming that they're the recipients of the gifts that that the volunteers have to offer but the events when project boon's mission is actually to create opportunities for the volunteers so uh it's funny i tell people all the time we're showing up at an event and we're gonna do we're gonna give out toys right we're gonna do that in two days from now we're gonna give out toys to kids uh, they're gonna come through in a drive through event um, everybody's been community members have been donating toys at our for-profit businesses and making financial donations and people have been going to buy toys, but the moment, and they get really worked up about the ins and outs of the event. And I always say, you guys don't understand, like the project Boone's mission is to create something for the volunteers. So the moment we show up on site or the moment, you know, weeks before when people were bringing toys in and things like that, or we were already meet, we were already accomplishing the, the company's mission. We activated the community to stop thinking about themselves just for a little bit. So this is why we added the component of, because um, you tell people like, hey, I want to start a nonprofit and I'm going to give away food and I'm going to give away shoes. And they're like, well, uh, that's not very sustainable. I don't really want to donate to you, right? That, that, that came up a lot, right? What's, is your business model sustainable? Uh, and I thought, well, 
what we can do is I can still have the thing that I want, which is to feed the people, bring the people together, give the kids toys, see the smile on the kid's face, right? But what I'll I'll also do is I'll invite other people who can give them things that'll help them make their life better, not just that moment better. Um, Like the eye exams and the glasses and the flu shots and the haircuts and the maybe the clothes closet that we provided for a wardrobe for work or uh, um, consultations with um, uh, recovery centers if you need to somebody needs to get into to treatment or something like that. Not just giving them stuff, but also creating opportunities for them to connect with other businesses in the community, nonprofits in the community that offer services and might be able to help them out of whatever situation they're in. I love it. I know that I had Brian Paul on, I think he's episode number three, uh, doing great things at Better Veterans for Life USA. But you know, his motto, and it really, all the nonprofits that I see working hard and doing great things, it, it's in alignment with his motto, which is stronger together. It's not just about Chris. It's not just about Project Boone. It's, it's legitimately about the community and creating those opportunities and creating those events and creating those partnerships and, and working together to really truly and honestly give back. And that's a a much greater meaning than just filling a need or fundraising for your organization. It's fundraising for the team, for the community, for the group, for everyone as a whole. But you're in Southern California and COVID mitigations abound. You had an event, you had it planned. I can't remember if it was Easter. Was it Easter when you shifted to the drive-through event? Yeah. Easter what, was the first event we canceled. Yeah. Tell us what that looks like and what you were able to do in partnership with your businesses to make this uh, run smoothly. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I think I did. I tell you, I was nominated for an award out here, uh, entrepreneurial award called, and they, it's the first time they did it this year. It's, it's a lot of different awards to give out, but this year's they, they had one specific category called COVID hero. And it was for people who had to reinvent their businesses because of COVID and so on and so forth. And so I was nominated because of this thing, the story I'm going to tell you, but I'll tell you when it happened, I didn't think it was any big deal at all. Like I, I, I literally was, I mean, we own some restaurants, the restaurants have drive throughs and, and I'm sure you can remember, I mean, when things started to shut down, it was scary, right? Like people didn't know what they could touch. They, everybody's, you know, I mean, it was just, it was strange. And so we had this restaurant with a drive through and people are going through the drive through and we modified our hours to close earlier on Sundays because we didn't have as many bodies coming into the restaurant and, you know, not sure if we're going to make it. And I just said to the board chair, I said, Hey, uh, this COVID thing's happening. We're not going to be able to do these holiday based events in parks and stuff. So, uh, th- theoretically I'll just, I'll just sit here on the curb till they open the park back up, right? Like, I I don't, I, you know, I'm going to just kick rocks. I don't really have a solution. I don't know what to do. And um, the board chair, Joel Clellan circled back with me and was like, so what are we, what are we going to do? And I was like, I don't, I mean, I guess the the restaurant's open, the drive-thru's open, but I guess we can do stuff through the drive-thru. Now, this is, this is the issue, right? Like if I do a Thanksgiving meal for 3,000 people, for 2,000 people, I, one of my restaurants owns a, um, uh, has a barbecue pit in the back that cooks 20 turkeys at a time. I only have to get 40 turkeys donated and cook those 40 turkeys. So the two sessions of cooking, so maybe eight or 16 hours of cooking, right? And then they shred the turkeys and then we feed, you can feed 2000 people with those 40 turkeys, right? But if I decide I want to give 400 families a Thanksgiving meal through a drive through event, like a full meal, I got to come up with 400 turkeys. <laughs> totally different animal right so we were like well it's easter why don't we do easter baskets through the drive through at the restaurant and then we'll do uh groceries i was like well if i give a gallon of milk away to 400 three to 400 families i gotta come up with three to 400 gallons of this is a total i've never done this before <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so it's a little bit different like when you have to do it all through the drive through i mean did you guys bring in like chick-fil-a drive through experts to expedite <laughs> how you were getting everything done in time. Well, and that's a funny story. Like the, the we basically we ended up doing Easter and then my executive assistant here at uh, firm media. Um, I, I, I don't know if I did tell you or not, but there, there's no paid employees for project Boone. They're all, they're all paid for, for the, by the for profits. So my executive assistant here at the marketing firm found a program that was going on through, um, 
it's like su- supporting farmers, right? Like far- because uh, certain things were happening because of COVID. I don't know the whole story, so I'm probably going to butcher it. But I'm, I'm going to give you the essence of what happened. The the there was something going on with overages from coming from farms, and uh, what happened was uh, Congress or the government basically said to the far- these farmers here in California, um, rather than then you're not going to be able to sell that stuff. Don't throw it away. We'll we'll give you money for it. And then you ship it to these different communities like nonprofits and stuff, right? So there were these truckloads of like, they called them uh, dairy baskets, right? There were boxes coming in with like milk and butter and cheese. And, you know, they were only good for about four or five days left. So you had to pick them up and then like get them to the family so they could use them. And um, she got us on lists for stuff like that. And, you know, uh, we had to get all the stuff trucked in and then, find some place to store it in our restaurant, right? And, um, and, and get it pushed out. But we figured out ways to get volunteers to stay socially distant, make signs like on Mother's Day, like Happy Mother's Day. And then we'd give a flowers to the, to the mothers through the car window and then give them groceries. And, you know, same with Easter. And then um, I think we did Easter and then we did Mother's Day. And then we realized this is amazing and painful at the same time. When you get three to 400 cars to go through a drive through I didn't know this. I just was like, oh, we're just going to usher them through the drive through We'll snake them through the parking lot so there's not too many cars out in the street. Three to 400 cars is like mile, you know, miles of cars. Right? <laughs> it's, it's not a, a small amount of cars uh, at all. Something I had never considered, right? Because we had a guy came out and he was like, I'm going to get some drone footage of this. And I was watching it. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So then you know, consequently the neighbors are like, Hey, like my driveway's blocked. Like n- nobody's happy that we're, <laughs> well, the people that are receiving the goods are happy, but everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> so we've stepped it up. We're now strategically partnering with cities and school districts where we're involving like local PD to manage traffic. And, um, but when we did, we were just like, we're just going to do it. And, uh, it was kind of, there was some, not great going on but we pulled it off (laughs) but you know you you take the idea you you spark the idea you figure out a way to get the food that you need funneled into where you're going you get the people all to get there and you do the event and sometimes that's all you need and it sounds like it worked ish okay for your first one right people came and they got the stuff that they needed which was good but there was all these secondary and tertiary effects where you had traffic problems and the neighbors are mad and all that stuff. But you took that experience and you, you did it. You didn't just have the idea you implemented and you went with it. You tried it out. You saw what wasn't uh, aligned. And like so many people that I've talked to, they get one bad report and they shut down and they stop. They get discouraged immediately. They feel like a failure, but you guys didn't do that. You're like, well, okay, now we're going to tweak this and we're going to figure out how to make this smoother for the next time. And you, you do and you tweak and you do and you tweak and you go and you keep going. And now you have the process. I mean, how was the Thanksgiving event with the drive through 300 plus cars, full Thanksgiving meals. Sad part, I think uh, probably more like 500 cars were in line. So we had to turn away quite a quite a few. Um, we just haven't developed the infrastructure to do more more of things yet. Uh, working on that. Um, refrigeration and warehouse space would be on my list of wants for for um, for Project Boone. But I mean, don't get me wrong. We have restaurants and we make the refrigerator walk in freezers and refrigerators work. Um, it's just a lot of juggling and that kind of stuff, right? We did that uh, and we got that many cars and what, what we figured out now is we use parks where they have um you know some parks where there's like a little driveway inside the park before you get to the parking lot so it kind of snakes through the park and like okay now now we can get like a, three blocks of cars off the drive off the street and get them snaking through here right and then we get them up to the place where we're going to distribute and we split we why them at the end we split them in two lines right and then we have large tents distributing stuff out either side so now we're giving three cars at a time stuff instead of, and we're just, hey, pop your trunk. There's signs along the way that tell them what to do when they get up there. People in masks directing traffic. 59 minutes. We put all those cars through that drive through on Thanksgiving. And what was it, what would it look like in for Easter? Three hours. So you took a three hour, a three hour debacle. You crunched it down to an hour. You made it efficient. You got people off the street. You got everyone fed. That that's amazing. That's a that's a great COVID success story. That's a great 
nonprofit success story. That's a great system success story. Uh, and, and really that, that highlights for a, a lot of organizations that I talk to that they, you know, they tried one event and they weren't sure and they just never tried the event again. They never gave it another shot. They didn't try to tweak it and go forward with it. You know, the first book launch that we did with Books by Vets, I think there was more authors there than the people that came through to get books signed. And we did a little bit more promotion on the next time and we got uh, local government involved. We were in Oklahoma City, so we had state senators and state congressmen. I think we had a county commissioner. We had two people from local media uh, show up and then everyone actually told all their friends and family and made the events and all that stuff. We sold out of books in 10 minutes. We had four speakers lined up. We had live music. We had a venue donated. Uh, and we had a fantastic event. But if we would have called it quits after the first event, we never would have got to event number two. And event number two was the magic that kept everything we were doing going. We needed event number two. And if we would have stopped at event number one, it never would have happened. Yeah, no, I, I feel you. A lot of times the, the key to success is just to keep going, right? Right. Uh, I, I mean, I was, I got a job when I got out of the music business working for a marketing agency. I, you know, I, I had, basically I did, I, I was director of marketing and publicity for a, a label called Brainstorm Artists International in the 90s. Um, that was one of my titles, among other things. I had uh, an investment from EMI Music Publishing to own an independent record company. But, you know, I didn't even know it at the time, but, but, uh, when I got out of the music business, I realized that I, my skill set was marketing and that I had had a job. I, I, <laughs> because prior to that, I was like, I don't think I've ever really been employed and I wouldn't even know what to put on a resume. But when it came down to crunching a resume, I was like, wait a minute, I actually had a title once. It was director of marketing, right? So, <laughs> um, so uh, you know, the idea is to, to, to start, you know, we, we market these events and we get these people to them. And, and you're right. I mean, you know, if we fail, we just have to keep stepping it up and augmenting it a little bit. This is something to know about events, right? Like I tell people all the time, like the director, um, sort of the, the development director for Project Boone is the executive assistant here at Firm Media. And she's, these are some of the biggest things she's ever worked on. And she's the one calling all the shots, right? And I was, I set her down. The Thanksgiving event, she was super nervous. Like, I think I'm going to forget something, like blah, blah. And I said, look, I said, we're doing a drive through event. Three, 400 people are going to come through and get turkeys and the sides. When we get to the event, you need 300 turkeys. You need 600 cans of corn, 600 cans of green beans, 300 boxes of stuffing, some dinner rolls, and a bag to put that stuff in. That's it. You could forget everything else and no one at the event's going to know that you forgot it. You know what I mean? You can forget the banner that has all the sponsors on it. You know what I mean? You can, <laughs> you can forget everything else and no one's going to know. So, so stop with all the like worrying about all the details. Like our goal is to get those, that food in that car with those people so they can go home and make that meal for their immediate family. Yeah, it's, it's the same with wedding. Of all the details go wrong, as long as the two people that are getting married and, and the minister show up and they say I do and the paperwork sign, everything else can be a complete disaster. And there's a whole a whole line of movies out there that uh, detail that to the very end of exactly what that looks like. All that stuff doesn't matter. Is it nice to plan? Is it nice to think about? Are they nice to have? So yeah, there's lots of them. But just because it's a nice to have doesn't mean it's a have to have. And once you get those things dialed in it's it's go time yeah i was telling you that like that that job i got at the market the first job i got at that marketing agency i mean basically it was a sales job i had to take marketing pitches to plastic surgeons and sell them on them right and i had never really sold anything i didn't know i had sold things but i guess as a marketer i've been selling my whole life right um i i went to you know uh get take this job and i man the level of rejection was just constant and then when I started to get good at it, right? Like I took this job as a marketing consultant um, um, for an agency back in the day when, when um, you know, uh, it, Google wasn't even a thing yet, right? Like just having a website was, was a big deal. And so this agency was building websites for plastic surgeons and there wasn't a way to really find them on the internet or anything, right? I would go try to sell these products and they, they were like, well, you were going to go to the state of Texas and you're going to talk to these 60 doctors. And I was like, what's the annual revenue from the 60 doctors in, in the state of Texas? And they were like, oh, it's like, uh, I think it was like 
a hundred thousand dollars or something like that, or six hundred thousand dollars, like nothing special. No one had really worked the area, right? Um, so they sent me out there, and a year later, I had turned it into like a two or three million dollar territory. Um, but I had taken the number from sixty doctors down to forty. And the thing is, I just went out and I found the forty that were willing to really get busy, right? And then I I did what I said I was going to do with those doctors, right? And it, and it grew that market uh, exponentially. But in between, to get there, I was rejected so many times. And so I would start to talk to people that were trying something new. Like for instance, my daughter is in the fashion industry, right? And a little shy. And I was able to sit down with her and be like, Hey, something that I've learned over the years is like, if you get rejected and then you you like, you try something, get rejected and never try it again. You're never going to make it. Never. Like you're never going anywhere. Right. Like if you want to put yourself out there with a fashion brand, you better you know, get some thick skin and be putting stuff out there over and over. Right. And, and I would think about it and like to hit my monthly number as a sales guy, as a, as an interim marketing consultant to hit my monthly number, that means I had to get 10 yeses. And then I was like, wait a minute, but I had to get 80 no's, 90 no's, you know what I mean? And so I started looking at that with the, with the events and things like that. When things would fit, fa- would fail, I would be so devastated when I was younger. And now I'm like, well, whatever. <laughs> Well, I, I think the, the important thing is to really define failure because I don't think, I think if, if you get uh, rejected, if you get told no, thank you, I don't think that's a failure unless you then quit. I think it is just a bump in the road is part of the process. And the only time you actually fail is when you hang it up. Uh, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you don't quit, you win. If you don't quit, you win. I've, I'm in the military. I've got more than 20 years in and there's been hard times. There has been tough times. There's been super difficult times. There's been tragedy and all sorts of other things. And if I would have quit at any point in there, I couldn't say that I had done my 20 years. I couldn't retire from the military. And in order to take care of my family, that's what I really needed to do. And that's what I'm still currently doing along with this on the side. But the only reason I got this far, and the only reason I got so far with the podcast or with the Warriors Wallet Project that I did and all the things that I've done is I've just showed up, I've done the work, and I didn't quit. Just those three things are going to take you through most anything you deal with in this life. And it's evident everything that I've done. And it's more than evident in everything that you've done. And I definitely want to you know, thank you for coming in here and sharing your story today to show how you took what you had in the business world and were able to then give back. And when the situation called for it, you're able to fold them back into each other to work together to get this thing done. And even though the first one didn't go, Eh, maybe as planned, you still got the food delivered like you said you were going to, and now that you've kept going, you've streamlined the process down to 59 minutes or 57 minutes, uh, which is just amazing. Hey, if the people out there listening want to get a hold of you and donate to Project Boone or uh, get a hold of you for Firm Media, where can they find you? Um, probably the best, fastest way to find me would be Project Boone, B O O N. Project Boone, B O O N dot org. You know, uh, email would get to me if you went through there. Um, Project Boone is on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, so any messages through there would get to me. That's probably the, the fast way. Firm Media, Hitchburger, those all have websites, but Project Boone is a really fast way to get a hold of me. Hey, that's awesome, Chris. Thanks so much for, for coming on and sharing today and talking about, you know, how you were able to deliver services in, in a real time of need. Hmm. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. You've been listening to The Nonprofit Architect. To listen to all our past shows, visit http colon forward slash forward slash nonprofitarchitect.org. And be sure to subscribe, rate, and review our show. Thank you.